Hey, Canucks fans, Jacob Markstrom will be away from the team for the next few days as he attends a memorial service for his father in Sweden. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary, my second one for Monday, December the 2nd. Earlier this morning, I talked about the month of December, 13 games, 10 of them at home, some, seven of them against Pacific Division rivals. Very important month, obviously, for the Canucks. There are two roster changes that I wanted to talk about really quickly. Number one, the the lesser insignificance is Jalen Chatfield, defenseman, has been called up from the Utica Comets as insurance as our seventh defenseman while Alex Eller is out. As Eller is out, Oscar Fantenberg is in. He played well last night, as I mentioned. And now Jalen Chatfield has been called up as the seventh defenseman. And more significantly, more important, Jacob Markstrom has been granted a personal leave of absence so he could go back to Sweden, fly back to Sweden, and attend the memorial service of his late father. We know the story that two or three weeks ago in early November, Jacob Markstrom lost his father to cancer. Now we now know that's why he went back to Sweden in October for a few days to be with his father. And yes, the sad news of his father's passing earlier this month, sorry, earlier in November, we're in December now. So last month, and now Jacob Markstrom is able to go back um, to Sweden to pay his uh, respects, be with the family and attend the memorial service for his late father. And uh, two things I want to say here, basically. Number one, it just speaks to how remarkably strong Jacob Markstrom is and how how much of a battler and a warrior he is, how courageous he is. And I talked about this a couple times before, but to, to think about you know how much he played through November, he had a couple of bad games, but some really good games as well. And for anyone, for any of us to do our regular uh, routine, our daily life, losing a loved one, such as a parent, you guys know I've lost, I lost my father 15 years ago. It still hurts. Uh, I still think about him every day, pray for his soul every day. But it's not easy. And anyone who's lost a parent or a loved one or a sibling or, or a child or a spouse, whatever it may be, you, you know that. Um, so for him to not only grieve and deal with that, but to perform at such a, on such a grand stage, right? The, the best hockey players in the world, the best league in the world, it's truly remarkable. So uh, hats off to Jacob Markstrom in that respect. The other part I want to talk about is really um, how this kind of uh, it feeds into or it, it, it aids in the story of this narrative um, of Canucks fans sometimes. And there's a lot of... There's a lot of angst yesterday when the Canucks announced that Jacob Markstrom would be starting um, the game against Edmonton at home. And, oh, why is he starting? It's a back-to-back -back with travel. They're just coming off a six-game road trip and, and whatever it may be. Why, it should be Demko. It should be Demko. Markstrom, you know, and that was, that was before we knew any of this, the fact that he was going to fly home to Sweden. Now, in hindsight, it's very easy to see why he was given the start yesterday. Um, if they knew... And I'm sure they did. The Canucks knew that Jacob Markstrom desired to go back to Sweden this week. And it makes sense because the Canucks only have two games this week. They have Ottawa on Tuesday night and they have Buffalo on Sunday afternoon. So it's only two games in the next six days. This is a... And I'm not saying that's why they... Maybe they did uh, plan the schedule of the memorial service for around this time as well. You know, looking at the Canucks schedule, uh, especially after they were away and they were playing every second night basically for the last two weeks. Now it's a nice, a bit of a reprieve in the schedule. So this makes sense. It, I'm sure, I'm almost certain that the Canucks knew of um, Jacob Markstrom's desire to fly back home. They knew it was going to be this week. And that's why they gave Jacob Markstrom the start last night. And yes, it was travel, but it was only an hour flight from Edmonton. Only a one hour time difference. And he, the fact that he played well, you look at the actual hockey aspect, he played very well on Saturday night, holding McDavid and Dreisaitl to only two goals, the entire team. And then you kind of get into the other team's head a little bit, right? Like, uh, they spent 60 minutes trying to score on you and they only scored two goals. Why not go back with them if he was, if he was healthy and feeling good? So all those things, but the fact that the Canucks knew this was likely happening, that he was going to fly back to Sweden... Um, it all makes sense now why he started yesterday. And you guys know, yesterday I didn't mind the fact that Jacob Markstrom was starting if, uh, because I didn't know any of this either. I obviously was pointing towards the fact that it was, it was a light travel day and that he played very well against Edmonton and why not try and ride the hot hand against someone who played well. Now, granted, it didn't work out. They lost 3-2, to two, not Markstrom's fault, right? To the three goals were, were on the power play, so, does, um, uh, so it wasn't his fault. And I, there was no one really uh, questioning why didn't Demko play uh, you know, after the game because Markstrom had a, a solid performance. But I kind of tweeted about this yesterday. It kind of speaks, like I said, to, to kind of the fan base here. I already kind of knew that if the Canucks had lost... There, it could possibly have nothing to do with Jacob Markstrom's play. He could have stood on his head and lost one nothing. yet there would be a small uh, 
at least I predicted there would be a small percentage of, of fans that would say, oh, that's why you should never start him back to back. He traveled. That's why you should have started Demko. To the Canucks fans' credit, um, I didn't see a lot of that. I saw barely any of that online yesterday, which is good because people knew that it wasn't Markstrom's fault that the Canucks lost yesterday. So this makes sense. And one other thing I wanted to throw in there, and I tweeted about this earlier, Travis Green was good. Like like any leader, like any coach, like any mentor, you kind of protect your player. You you get experience. You know what to say to the media and what not to say. So um, Travis Green simply said when they interviewed him yesterday pregame, they simply said, we're going back to Markstrom because he's our starter. He's playing well, and I want my starter in net. I want to get my starter on a roll. He's our starting goaltender. And that was fine. Clear concise, short and sweet, and it made sense. That was a hockey decision. The hockey decision was, he's my starter. He just beat this team 24 hours ago. Let's go back to him. I'm sure that was fine. Music to Markstrom's ears. I'm sure Demko had no issues with it, um, especially if Demko knew that this was happening, you know, the scheduling thing. And Travis Green isn't going to sit there, even if he knew, he wasn't going to sit there and say, well, I'm playing Markstrom today because uh, tomorrow he's going to be on a plane to Sweden because uh, he needs to go be uh, attend for his father's uh, funeral memorial service. Travis Green would not say that like he's too good of a leader and too good of a coach. And that's what leaders do. That's right, coaches do, right? They, they know what to say. They protect their players. And, and they know exactly what to say and what not to say. So all to say, it all makes sense now when you look at it today on Monday. Why Markstrom played yesterday and he played well. And the fact that Michael DiPietro has been called up from Utica to back up Thatcher Demko. I'm sure Demko, obviously Demko is going to start on Tuesday and likely on Saturday, depending on when Markstrom gets back into town. And then uh, Di Pietro, I heard some people say, well, why bring him up if he's just going to sit on the bench? It's more than sitting on the bench. Number one, if some, God forbid, something happens to Demko, Di Pietro is the next best option out of all the guys we have in our system. So A, he's our third best goaltender. And B, being with the team, practicing with the team, picking up on habits, picking other players' brains, and just learning how to be a pro, it's all going to help Michael DiPietro as he develops fully into you know, a professional goaltender. So all, just want to throw that out there. Everything seems to make sense. Everything fell into place of why Marshall played yesterday. And now, more importantly, forget the hockey. We, we hope and we pray that he has a safe flight and that he's able to spend good quality time, really, really focus in on his family, and then um, have a bit of closure, if you know what I mean. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but have a bit of closure when it comes to the memorial service for his dad and then come back to um, the team and hopefully with a clear mind and, and focus and ready to go. Not that that was an issue before, but you know, time heals all wounds, so to speak. So as you get further away from the date of the actual passing, it should be a bit easier. I'm not saying it's easy, obviously, but it should be a bit easier. Okay, that's what I have for you today. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Were you okay with Markstrom starting yesterday without knowing the full story? Do you think he played okay? And uh, how long do you think the Canucks knew about this? And it's all good things, right? Um, do you agree with my assessment then that it made sense for for Markstrom to play knowing that this is happening? And do you agree with me that I think that Travis Green handled himself very well in, in diffusing any questions and just speaking matter-of-factly about Markstrom's play on the ice. There we go. Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, reply as always. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy the day. God bless. Go Canucks go.